I've been on this quest to rebuild civilization by recreating all of our technology, starting from the Stone Age, but I've run into a lot of hurdles crossing into the industrial era, mostly chemical. I've dabbled with some early forms of electricity, batteries, and I've been working on building a camera. But the biggest hurdle for any of them is producing enough of the so-called king of chemicals, a crucial chemical that is instrumental for making a huge assortment of other chemicals we're gonna need for countless modern technologies. After a lot of struggle, I feel like I finally found a clear pass through, and it involves a lot of chicken poop. The so-called king of chemicals is sulfuric acid. It's hard to find an industry that doesn't use it or something that's made using it to the extent that a country's sulfuric acid production is considered a good indicator of their industrial strength. I've been able to produce small quantities in past videos, but never concentrated to be of any real practical use. So this video is going to be about revisiting some past chemical processes to try and build my way up to a better way to manufacture this crucial compound. First up, a bunch of chicken poop. I previously spent several days boiling down and concentrating the soluble components of the droppings from a chicken coop. The chemical I was after was potassium nitrate, or saltpeter. We had evidence that we had some in our results, but it was never in a strong or pure concentration. The best course I found for getting a better result was to just scale everything up, which means I'm gonna need even more chicken poop. Fortunately, Elliot has his own chickens and gifted me with a few buckets. I get the best gifts from some people. This time I did nearly the same exact process of soaking and straining everything to dissolve out the nitrates I'm after. Chicken droppings are a good source for producing saltpeter because the urea in their waste decomposes by bacteria to form a few forms of nitrates, including potassium nitrate. Saltpeter is very soluble in water, so my first goal is to remove as much of the insoluble mass as possible. After straining it through a bucket and straw, I let things settle and started straining through coffee filters. I also experimented with using bentonite clay as a clarifying agent. The clay bonds to any particulates in the solution and helps pull them down and settle everything out. After that, it's a matter of concentrating everything down and letting it slowly dry up and straining it as I go. When sufficiently cleared, I can begin the process of crystallization. So after the pleasure of going back and working with some more chicken droppings, I have now reprocessed pretty much everything from before and this new batch to kind of add a little bit more to it. And now I'm in various stages of recrystallizing to try and purify out just the saltpeter. So you start seeing some very long crystals that are indicative of the potassium nitrate. So I think we are looking very closely at success with that. And as it's gone on and done more and more processes, slowly getting rid of the brown color. I don't know if that's gonna add too much impurity, but it is a sign of some. But I went back and did a little bit more research and I came across before about how they would add potash to the reaction. And I was a little confused about why, because it, it did seem that just straight droppings does contain potassium nitrate. And our initial tests way back when in Utah of trying to light it and getting the sparks were eh, indicative of that. But after further research, it sounds like there are three forms of nitrates that potentially form. We have the potassium nitrate, which we're after, and there's also calcium and sodium nitrate. And the calcium nitrate can be a little bit of uh, issue because it can actually absorb water and that will cause the gunpowder to be less effective. And that might be what caused the kind of test batch of gunpowder I did to not be too effective. So I think the ones I've recrystallized the most are probably mostly actually just the potassium nitrate that I'm after. But then these other ones likely have a fair amount of these other nitrates. So I'm going to uh, redissolve these all back into solution and see if we can get a stronger result. But for that, we're gonna need the chemical potash. And fortunately, I've done this a few different times, ironically to make glass. And now in our glass making attempt, we have a large source we can extract the potash or potassium carbonate from. But first, thank you to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. I know from personal experience that there are often times when you need some outside help to help you get through some difficult situations. Trying to handle your struggles on your own is a heavy burden, and getting professional help can be all the difference in the world. Whether through BetterHelp or other avenues, it's incredible how seeking professional help can make a real difference. The, the very first step of just finding a therapist can be kind of the largest burden to overcome, but today's sponsor, BetterHelp, can make those first steps super easy by connecting you with a licensed therapist best suited for your needs. You can take the first steps by heading to their site, betterhelp.com/htme 
BetterHelp matches you with an experienced professional tailored to your needs. The best part, you can engage with your therapist from the comfort of your own space through messaging, phone calls, or video chat. BetterHelp usually matches you within 48 hours, ensuring a swift start to your mental health journey. Let BetterHelp be your guide to a better and happier you. Visit betterhelp.com slash HTME or choose HTME during your sign up for an exclusive discount on your first month. Remember, mental health matters and taking that first step is a sign of strength. So after extracting the ashes and separating everything and recrystallizing in a few different rounds, we now have decent chunks of what should be relatively pure potash. Still has a very slight yellow tint to it, so there's probably some impurities. This probably isn't quite lab grade, but this is probably the purest stuff I've gotten. The very first time I did this, I did not do it very well and ended up with a very uh, gray, almost greenish solution. So this looks a lot more promising. What I did differently this time though is rather than boiling it down, I just let it dehydrate because I had a lot more time to let it just slowly dry out. But in the process of doing that, some sort of reaction happened where some sort of solid actually formed in the solution that wasn't there in the beginning. And my best guess is this is actually potassium bicarbonate, which is basically the potassium version of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda. And it has a lot of very similar uses. It's interesting because I've tried to make baking soda before very similarly and it's worked. An interesting accidental chemical I made along the way. So now with our final crystallized, mostly pure potash here, we can now react it with the solution from the chicken poop and try and turn more of the nitrates into potassium nitrate. So let's give that a shot. Now with a relatively pure sample of saltpeter, we can use it as a catalyst to make us a much more concentrated sulfuric acid. In a previous video, I went through a lot of effort to recreate the first century alchemist method of producing sulfuric acid, namely by dry distilling a few different sulfur containing compounds. While successful, the results were incredibly dilute. One potential reason for this was that after my glass retort broke, I switched to an iron one. This potentially reduced my results even further as any produced sulfuric acid could potentially react with the iron. But even then, this method was horribly inefficient. To find a better solution to this method, I jumped further ahead some 1700 years, going from the mystical alchemy to the age of science with actual chemistry. In 1746, John Roebuck devised what is known as the lead chamber method. Rather than glass, he used a box made of lead, a cheaper material that is also non-reactive to sulfuric acid. Inside the bottom of it was filled with water, and a mixture of sulfur and saltpeter would be ignited and placed inside. As an oxidizer, saltpeter helps oxidize the sulfur into sulfur trioxide, which then combines with the water to form sulfuric acid. I previously collected sulfur ore from near Death Valley, so now I just need to build a basic lead box chamber and make something that I can burn the sulfur and saltpeter on. Oh wow, there's like a coat of it. That's crazy. Oh, we are red. Red is a lot of sulfur still in here that is not burned. So I think I'm gonna try and burn it a little bit longer and see if we can concentrate this even further. 
Supposedly you can do this multiple times over and over again until you get a nice result. This method supposedly allowed Roebuck to produce up to 30% concentrated sulfuric acid. After an initial run, I didn't get quite near that concentration. However, in a single 30 minute run, I was able to produce more sulfuric acid, which had previously taken me months of attempts with the previous method. Today, this method has been replaced by even more efficient methods of making sulfuric acid, but the lead chamber method remained a common process into the 20th century, being scaled up to giant and more efficient setups. Running this process several times, I was able to produce a large supply of dilute sulfuric acid, which then could be boiled down into concentrated sulfuric acid. I did run into a couple issues with the setup, mostly that if it gets a little too hot, it can actually melt through the lead chamber, so I had to be a little careful about that. All right, so now we find, so finally, probably, I want to be careful with that. We don't splash that directly into my face. But uh, so now after a lot of work, but considerably less than my first attempt, we have a nicely concentrated sulfuric acid. And we can add that to the apothecary. And this really opens the door for a lot of other chemicals. Most notably is that a lot of other acids can be derived using sulfuric acid. And one really important one that I've been needing to make for a while is nitric acid. And now that we have relatively pure saltpeter, we can react that with the sulfuric acid and distill out and produce nitric acid. Nitric acid is a pretty crucial ingredient for making silver nitrate, a photoreactive compound crucial for making camera film. There are a few different methods of making early forms of camera film that don't involve silver nitrate. However, it really seems that at least at some point, as far as I can tell, you're gonna need a strong acid, most often nitric acid, for uh, some reaction to make it actually happen. This has been a major roadblock for making my own photography and finally wrapping up my camera project. So thankfully I have that. But this is also gonna be really useful for some other compounds, most notably for making copper sulfate. And that can be made now using a combination of both the sulfuric acid and the now nitric acid that I've made. Combine them together and you can uh, just throw in some metallic copper and it'll dissolve it away and leave behind this really nice blue copper sulfate. The reason I really want copper sulfate is that, well, it has a variety of uses. In my mind, it's gonna be most useful for making a battery, a specifically the Daniel cell battery, the battery that was most frequently used for telegraph. And the reason we're trying to make that is because we're gonna build our own telegraph system. And we're gonna try and jump ahead to a most technologically advanced project and try to make a telegraph. We've already been working a lot on trying to make the batteries and combine that with the electromagnet we made before and all the wire we spent a lot of time trying to draw ourselves. Uh, we are pretty close to finally having that. The goal for us right now is we're gonna try and get this fully up and operational and functional so we can bring it to this year's open sauce in June. Provide a interactive uh, opportunity for people to try out the earliest communications network and actually go hands-on and use our telegraph to send a message. We're gonna try and figure out a way to connect it with like a Raspberry Pi to interpret the signal and then you can actually text somebody through Morse code. So hopefully that all works out and we can get that out and uh, this is gonna be also my announcement that I am going to be back at Open Sauce. I went last year, it was a ton of fun. I had a really great time meeting everyone who was there uh, and I hope to see as many of you as can make it again. Tickets are still on sale. I hope to see you there and I hope you guys can try out a working telegraph system that we built entirely from scratch and you can use it to send a telegram. I built this apothecary a little while ago and now it's uh, starting to finally fill up with a few chemicals we made myself. I'm hoping once I get a good assortment to go out and find a way to get these chemically tested for the purity. Cause it's always been a, a big curiosity is just how pure can I actually get these compounds. Um, so it'll be interesting to get these all tested and find out sometime in the future. Thanks again for watching. Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.